This short screencast will give you a introduction into what the selection sort is. The basics. Why use selection sort as opposed to bubble sort? Well, with the bubble sort, we have to go through uh, many iterations with our loops. So um, if we have five items in our array, we know that we have to go through at least five times to get our array sorted. For smaller arrays, that's fine. But for larger arrays, this means a lot of iterations, which means a slower program. So this is good for larger arrays. Uh, what basically does it do? Well, it finds the smallest value in a list, and then it keeps comparing against that smaller value. We'll use a temporary variable to hold on to that value and also where it is in the array, and then use that to swap out values. So what exactly happens? Well, we have two loops, an inner and an outer. The outer loop will control how many times we look for a lowest value, and then the inner loop will find that lowest value, hold on to that value, and the index of where it's at. Then it'll swap it out. Um, and like I said, with this method of sorting, we actually make less passes through the array, and that's key with a much larger array. Now, what I'd prefer to do now is cut to Raptor so that I, you guys could see what actually is going on rather than me talk about the algorithm. Okay, here we are in, in Raptor, and um, let me just step through our variable list so that um, you know what these variables are and their purpose in the program. So the first one is our array. That one's going to hold on to five randomly generated numbers. I have one number, uh, and this is basically just going to hold on to one value in the array or one element um, so we can isolate it and kind of make it a little less daunting. Index keeps track of where we're at in our loop. Num items tells us how many items in the array, so you can see that's set to five. There's five items in the array. Temp is our swap variable. It'll hold on to a value so we don't lose it. And then we have counters for our first loop and our second loop. So the first part of the program is basically going to generate the numbers and place them in the array um, and then print them out for us. We'll reset the index back to 1 so we can reuse it and then we start into our, um, our sorting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint uh, here at this point and uh, that'll slow us down. I'm going to bring over our management console so that as the program runs we can um, take a look and see what our numbers are. Okay, so what are our numbers? Now I'm going to generate this again just because I don't I don't like these so I'm going to stop the program and I'm going to run it one more time. It's one of the nice things about the random number. Okay, We've got good numbers with this run, so I'm going to keep this list. And what basically I'm looking for is just no duplicates, although it'll work fine with duplicates, but just a lot of different variation in the sort so you guys can see how this works. So now you can see I've stopped here and I'm setting my first loop equal to the number of items, which is five. So it means that this loop will end once we've reached five. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm setting littlest equal to the first um, item in the uh, in our loop, excuse me, first item in our array, and we're doing that mostly just to set a, a value to it as a comparison because if we set it equal to zero, um, when we take a look at our list, there's nothing in here that is, um, you know, less than zero. So our littlest item is set to 18. We know that that's not the littlest item, but like I said, we're just using it as a comparison sake. So we're setting our index equal to um, first loop, which for right now is equal to 1. And our second loop is going to be first loop plus 1. So basically, we're going to be taking a look at the second item in um, our array, which is what we want to do. OK. Now we go through. And the inner loop will end as soon as second loop gets to be greater than number of items. So right now, number of items is 5. So once second loop is 6, then we're good. OK, so now we're going to take a look at the second item in the list and see if it is smaller than 18. 
and it is. 6 is smaller than 18, so we end up basically storing 6 into littlest. Then we're going to hold on to where exactly we found this item. We're going to uh, iterate our second loop and we're going to go around again. Now we're going to compare 19 from 18 and since eight, 19 is bigger than 18 we'll head on the no side. Iterate again and now we're going to compare 7 with 6 which is 7 is bigger than 6 so we iterate again and then now we're looking at 8. Uh, against 6. So because 8 is um, bigger than 6, now when we take a look our second loop is at 6 which means this inner loop stops. Okay, so we're only into this if structure as long as first loop, which is 1, is not equal to index. And index is equal to 2, so that means we're in here. Now index meaning where we found our smallest value. So we'll step through and basically we're going to take out the first item in the array which is 18. Hold on to that and temp and then this next block of code will basically switch 6 with 18. Now we put 18 in the spot where we found 6. Iterate first loop to 2. Okay, since 2 is not equal to 5, we'll go again. So now we're going to set littlest equal to the first item in our array, which is 6, which just happens to be the smallest item in our list. And we set index now equal to first loop, which is 2. So now we're going to start looking from 2 down in our list. Okay, so second loop is equal to first loop plus one, so that's three. So now we're going to compare um, basically the next items into the into our array. All right, so random numbers second loop, second loop is equal to three, so we're going to take a look at this value and see is this 19 less than 18. We know the answer to that. 19 is not less than 18, so we keep going. And now let's compare 18 and 7. 7 we know is smaller. So we hold on to 7, we hold on to where we found it, which is it, it, it placeholder 4, and now we iterate again. And now we compare 7 against 8. Now 8 is bigger, so we go ahead and we step on through. So now um, our second loop is equal to 6, which is greater than the number of items. Since first loop, which is 2, is not equal to the index, which is 4. Remember, that's where we found 7. We have to go in here and we have to swap out. So basically, we're going to put 7 where 18 is and 18 where 7 is. Okay. We increment again so that we can start comparing down. If you notice, what it keeps doing is it keeps isolating a smaller and smaller section of the array rather than bubble sort, which just moves stuff down. We actually do swaps, and with those swaps, we're able to cut down on the number of iterations of our loop. Okay, so now we're going to go through again, and now what we're going to take a look at is first loop is 3 which is 19, we're setting that to littlest, which we know it isn't, but we're setting it to give it a value. And now we're going to set the index equal to first loop, because we already have these two in the right order. So now we have to cut the list, remember, and go down. So first loop then is, um, uh, or first loop then is equal to 3, so we're going to set the index to 3, which means we're going to start comparing uh, indexes 4 and 5, meaning the fourth and the fifth element in the array. Okay, so now we're going to take a look and see is 19 less than 18, which it is not, so we'll hold on to 18. And here's where it actually gets a little interesting. We're going to compare, okay, second loop is 5 against littlest, 8. 8 is less than 19, so we're going to actually replace 18 with 8 and hold on to its value. Okay, now since we're done going through the rest of our array, 
uh, we're going to head into the swap area. And because we did hold on to a smallest value, that's what causes us to be in here. So now we're going to move 8 to where 19 is and 19 to where 8 was. And you can see now we're sorted. Okay, now first loop is equal to 4 and our number of items is 5, so we're not quite there yet. We're going to take now um, our last item in the array and assign it to littlest, which is 18, sorry, second from the last item. And we're going to compare it to now the last item. And we know that 19 is bigger than 18, so we go through and first loop which is equal to 4 is also equal to the index and remember we're only in here if we if we found something smaller so now uh, we don't go in there so we just iterate and now we notice that our numbers are 5 so once again and then the rest of part of this program just prints out our list sorted so once again what this does is it cuts down on the number of passes um, within uh, our program and therefore makes it a little bit more um, efficient and quicker. Okay, now I know that this sort algorithm is a little tough to understand, so what I would suggest is that you download the file, selection sort, put a stop, uh, a breaking point in, just like I did, and then um, run it bit by bit so you can watch and see exactly what's going on. If you have any other questions, please log them to the appropriate discussion forum.